Okay. As you will all remember, after he was elected chairman in 2015, in 2016, most of the parliamentary Labour Party resigned all over uh, sort of three or four days almost, or a week. Each day people were resigning. And, um, and then somebody challenged him to be the leader. And as a consequence, there was this whole discussion on the interpretation of the rules, the Labour Party rules, as to whether or not he needed the 20% of the parliamentary, parliamentary Labour Party to stand again. Or did the rules say that as an incumbent, he didn't need that, that he just is automatically on the ticket? And I think that the plan was, in essence, that there wouldn't be a number, there wouldn't be enough Labour MPs to give him the 20% so he could not stand. Therefore, he would be excluded and he would therefore be out of the race. And it all came down to the interpretation of the rules. Uh, I am a barrister uh, and I was contacted um, by the leadership office to give a legal opinion on the interpretation of the rules. Um, which I did, and um, it would become as no surprise that, in my view, that he did not need the 20% of the MPs, that he was able to automatically stand again. And it all came down, I'm sure many of you are, will remember this, to this one day in 2016 where there was a, an NEC meeting, a secret ballot, to decide uh, the interpretation of the rules in short and there was a lot of media coverage and I um, was taken down there to present my legal opinion. Ian McNichol was the obviously the chair at the time, uh, the whole of the NEC was there. So the first thing, uh, the hurdle that we, we faced, well that, that surprised me, is that none of the NEC had the agenda. The agenda and the papers for the meeting were given out on the morning of that meeting when they all arrived so nobody knew what was going to be on that agenda or had the papers for that agenda or saw my legal opinion so um, the first um, uh, um, uh, point that was raised that I should be able to come in present my legal opinion and to assist them in interpreting of the rules um, uh, I, I had to stand outside because I had to have this discussion and they voted and I was refused entry so I wasn't allowed to go in so I sat outside uh, um, for um, well I, eventually I sat there all day but a, about four or five hours into the meeting the um, suddenly and the, the, the Labour Party solicitor was present and I was talking to him and having a friendly conversation suddenly I hear that the um, the Labour Party had actually instructed a senior Queen's Council who was in a room upstairs who they pulled in through the back door of the meeting to give an alternative legal opinion. Nobody knew about it, it was totally done by surprise and he walks into the room and gives this completely different alternative opinion to what I had given albeit they, they couldn't really hear mine because i had been already decided that I wasn't allowed into the meeting. So now um, we, we got slightly organised, so two things happened then. First of all, those that were friendly, if I can use that word, on the, um, uh, on the NEC, we, we created a WhatsApp group, which is how I was alerted to the fact that suddenly this QC had, had just appeared. And so they said, oh my God, He's just arrived and he's got this sort of 15 page legal opinion. So I'm sort of madly typing away saying, well, what does it say? Luckily, one of the people uh, in the meeting had to go to the toilet. And as she went to the toilet, she came out of the meeting, she threw me the legal opinion. Now remember, we're having to decide whether or not Jeremy Corbyn should be or continue to be the leader of the Labour Party. This is the, the situation that we're in. So I, I get thrown this legal opinion. So I'm reading it as he's presenting it 
and then WhatsApping questions to those on the NEC to ask him about the interpretation of the rules from his perspective. And so this is all unfolding. And um, that happened, and then we had to wait some time. Then um, Jeremy had to leave, and so Jeremy and I were sitting outside waiting why they vote while they voted and uh, eventually the uh, result came back you'll all remember that he uh, didn't need the 20 percent and as the incumbent he could then stand what happened there is is real evidence that the bureaucracy is trying to run the show i, I mean what surprised me most is as i was saying i was sitting there talking to the solicitor who is a an independent solicitor who has his own firm talking about the morning and my opinion or whatever and all the time he had a another barrister hidden away that nobody knew about and was brought out and and i felt that it brought my profession into disrepute as well that you know that this this game was being played as such um i mean you know he won the vote yeah um uh um but you know, I I was shocked by what was going on. Um, it was it was plainly, you know, uh, the fact that they didn't have the the agenda, the fact that they didn't have any of the papers, the fact that I had to leave the room, the fact that my opinion wasn't allowed, and the fact that another opinion was brought in that was completely opposite to mine.